right so if if I, if I were to stitch a few of the points uh, we had the we had the conversation so far is like you have been working at snorkel which is which is uh, a very open source project kind of company that is trying to build itself. And you have been dabbling around, like you said, uh, on the product side, uh, the VC side, and also have seen a uh, few companies where you, you were working with AI fund and trying to uh, start from scratch. One question that me as an academic researcher that normally see is we see these papers coming in every now and then, every week. I mean, if you if you if you pull up a central repository of papers who would be publishing there are tremendous amount and they are good papers i mean most of them are beating state of the art every month now if you see in language models they have these leaderboards and you see marvelous work being done but when it comes to production when we see like okay we, when we read these papers we feel like okay this is going to be the next big thing google is going to change because this is a great research but we don't see that productionized very well enough or at least it takes five or six years where do you think uh, companies typically fail at productionizing these things? Is it eventually a slow process or is there is there a something failure point in itself when we take these models from papers to productionizing it so that users can interact? In your experience, do you see any kind of uh, pitfalls over there for the standard pipeline? Uh, yeah, no, definitely. There's so many papers coming out, really hard to keep up. Uh, I think the main reason most of them are not productionized is, is really like, do companies see enough value in um, deploying them? Especially a lot of models right now are getting very large. And so it's like the cost of training, maybe fine tuning, deploying the latency requirements. So it really goes to like, is the model really going to be beneficial to my task over a very simple model that I can understand what it's doing, that I can sort of deploy very easily, that I can monitor very easily. Um, so I think, in a lot of cases, and, and this was also a learning back to like the, what did you learn when you were a machine learning engineer role? Um, I think in images and like, you know, when we were at landing, we did use like state of the art models like to figure out what was happening. But in a lot of cases, uh, and I, I did a lot of deep learning stuff, but in a lot of cases, like if you're especially starting from scratch for a startup, the simplest thing, you just want to try out the simplest thing that works and you use something off the shelf that maybe somebody else has already implemented. And then you try to use that because you've heard of it and it, it performs reasonably well. And a lot of thought is actually more around like, what does the product experience look like? Getting your customers, things like that, at least in the beginning. Um, and even at Snorkel, it's like, we always try to go with the simplest thing first, uh, just because it's like easier to manage, easier to implement, easier to deploy all of those things. And, and um, with these state of the art models, it's like, unless it's something that's really going to give you a huge jump in performance, which a lot of these just have like, minor jumps right um so really it's like yeah how much benefit are you going to get from this and if the benefit is large enough like i think um i i don't know the exact numbers on this but i think it's like bird because it was so successful google was able to implement it and productionize it across all of their systems very fast like i think it was like a year or so so i think if the value prop is strong enough then companies do it very fast but in general i feel like you, you do want to be like thinking more about the problem and what's going to solve it rather than like more state of the art stuff. Um, one caveat there is like uh, at Snorkel, we do keep track of like papers and stuff that's going to help us. So again, it, it goes back to value prop. Like we're thinking about like weak supervision. How can we auto suggest labeling functions and things like that, um, which is quite state of the art. Um, and we are thinking of productionizing it just because we see the value prop being large. Uh, but in terms of like the latest transformer model, which is like slightly better than BERT, it's like, um, is that really going to dramatically help and is it harder to maintain right 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 yeah that makes sense yeah uh, it's it's quite on the uh, trade off point where versus how the architecture is going to suit the platform in itself for example google in itself has a different kind of platform and, and the product they are building so definitely uh, a very stacked up versions like we see a lot of stacked up versions in medical imaging sector right like you you put all these things together in com from the computer science research and they build a very complex structure but that uh, that just adds up like like you said uh, it has to be a simple enough i mean definitely not simple in terms of deep learning it, they are complex in itself but it has to be simple enough so that uh, people can productionize it if i if i just merge every uh, every kind of uh, encoder decoder versus fcn and everything into one place they don't make sense even though uh, they might be specific on a they might be doing specifically well on a good data set so yeah that, that makes, sense. makes sense also another thing is i think hugging face has been really great in terms of like you know implementing the latest and greatest and i think that has helped people incorporate a lot of the latest and greatest like stuff into their own platforms 
Because really, like when you're trying to work at a company, like you don't want to implement a paper from scratch and like try to make it work on your system. That's a huge time sink, uh, depending on what your priorities are. Like if it is a huge jump, maybe you'll do it. But the fact that Hugging Face just does it and you can just change the model and then call it, I think is really helping with like productionizing or like really a lot of these things being used um, practically. Mm -hmm.